All right. Once again, we are live. Thanks so much for joining us today. Welcome back to the Indie Music Academy, the channel where we uncover the mysteries of the music industry, learn how to grow a larger fan base, and earn an income for our music. Today, I have a super special guest, Clarice Dodge, who's an, a, a manager of artists, studios, producers, and composers. And she's going to share her expertise with us today. So don't be shy. Hop into the chat and say hello. We love knowing who's with us. Uh, especially by name, because this is your time uh, to learn. And we did have some technical difficulties where we had to drop the other stream. So um, definitely uh, do your best to engage a little extra because we probably will have a smaller audience today as they figure out uh, how to get to this stream because the old one is gone, but we're going to rock and roll here. Uh, so if you're here live and you made it, um, extra special thank you. Uh, for joining us and make sure that you engage and use this time to your benefit as much as you can. So with that being said, Clarice, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I just want to start out uh, by uh, allowing you to just give a little bit of a background. Many of you maybe haven't uh, uh, met Clarice before or are not familiar with her work. So I want to just have uh, some time where you can just share a little bit of what you, about what you do as a manager and uh, it'll just set the entire stream back on track so people can get thinking of their questions and think what they want to learn from you today. So with that, uh, if you wouldn't mind just taking a few minutes, just giving us a little bit of your background and what you do. Okay, Ryan, thank you for having me. Well, uh, welcome everyone. I um, uh, started Studio Espresso after managing a recording studio uh, for about 12 years in Hollywood called Ocean Way. Then uh, Studio Expresso was launched in 2000. That was before a lot of online things were happening, uh, believe it or not. So it's been about 20, this is our 21st anniversary. And um, mm -hmm. I uh, compiled a group of people that were trustworthy professionals, uh, music makers, and I wanted to make that available to the, uh, you know, uh, growing independent artist community because a lot of late, labels, you know, people, even just well-known artists uh, in their lifetime, they change labels, they become independent and move on and so forth. And so this was a, a group of people that could help develop arrangers, producers, uh, session musicians, and the like. Uh, our, mm -hmm. the, me uh, the membership is by invitation. So, uh, and usually if you have about half a dozen credits on all music, and uh, you know you feel that you want to join the community, you just send me an email with your um, bio and links, and uh, we go from there. So uh, that's that. Now, on the artist management side, I've been uh, managing several artists over the years, and um, that is really my main, uh, you know, what I do. So Studio Expresso has become more of a promotional site for the mm -hmm. members. Uh, we do um, yearly events, like we're at NAM. we do uh, industry mixers and uh, things like that. So it allows people to network and um, connect because that's really the main thing. Um, so uh, with, as a manager, um, you really, uh, I feel like, you know, I'm first a friend, a family member. It's a lifetime situation you know when you are managing an artist you are first a fan of an artist mm -hmm. and uh, you know everything about them you're you're representing them in the best way possible and so you have their best interest in mind you're a good negotiator um, and you're basically getting them paid well and fast you know, that's yeah. one of the things. That's the and the other thing. <laughs> and the other thing with artist management is that you are sort of, you know, a coach, advisor, um, you know, uh, we're people first, everybody, you know, we have our, you know, last year was a good example of how life changed for everyone and how we had to learn new things and, you know, um, expand our way of reaching to fans. And so, that's where you know you, you just kind of put opportunities together and uh, and work with your artist and ultimately always having their vision in mind because every mm. good artist has a vision mm. and so artist manager's job is really to 
um, realize that vision, you know, by making connections, by uh, opening doors and what have you. So. Absolutely. That's awesome. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and you definitely have, and you definitely have, we're getting that uh, echo again, aren't we? Are you guys hearing the echo? Let us know in the chat. I don't hear it. Yeah. Okay. I don't hear it. Must, must be just me. Okay. Yeah. I don't hear it anymore either. But uh, what I was going to say is that um, for those of you tuning in, these are not unknown people. Her clients have worked with Green Day, Goo Goo Dolls, Michael Jackson, Lady Gaga. So we're talking about the top tier talent uh, in Los Angeles. And so, um, that is amazing. But Ryan, also and keep in mind, they all started where all of your audience is perhaps right now. You know, mm. you, you start from, you know, uh, learning a guitar or, you know, right. having a band and, you know, uh, just really improving your skills. So it, it starts there. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I want to ask you guys tuning in, uh, because we do have a very intimate group right here. I just want you to comment in the chat if you are someone who is looking to become a manager or play that management role, either uh, for a friend or for an artist that you believe in, or are you on the other side of the coin? Are you looking to receive management at some point? I just want to know what most of our audience today is leaning so we can customize the talk. Uh, specifically for you guys, but please let us know if you want to learn management or if you want to receive management. Um, and then we can kind of uh, dive into um, each angle as needed. But, um, and also thanks for tuning in. I just want to say hi to the few people here. Justin says, I'm here. Javi said, I made it. So glad you did, Javi. Um, yeah, Justin says, glad you fixed it. And <laughs> Ronaldo says, woohoo, sounding good now. That's exactly how yeah, I, that's I feel. Woo, yeah. that's good. Yes. <laughs> yes, and we want to make this the most valuable uh, time possible for you today. And Ricardo is just giving us a big old okay. All right, so James says he is looking to receive management. Oh, and also let us know if, if you're a, a producer or an artist or a studio owner, uh, because I think it would be really interesting if we talk about what exactly is a manager looking for, right? If you're an artist or if you're a producer, what do you have to do to get prepared? What do you need uh, to get in order? What are those ducks that we need to get in a row, right? So, and you can speak to this personally. If you're looking at talent, I'd love for you to answer, what are you looking for specifically that kind of attracts you to someone who is kind of um, emerging uh, out of their... Uh, I guess emerging above the rest of their peers, so to speak. Oh, are you asking me the question? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. What do you? Sorry. For? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's that's the good question. But you know, at different uh, levels of your career, you need different support. As for you know, you're looking for a different manager. Um, mm -hmm. I always say that when you're starting, and you know, let's say you just put the band together and. You know, you haven't even recorded and, uh, you know, but you're just slowly, gradually, you've got a fan base. So a wife, a girlfriend, boy, you know, boyfriend, best friend, they would make great managers in the early in stages the, mm -hmm. because they know the most about you. They know your history. They know what your likes and dislikes. They, uh, you know, they're a big fan of what you're doing and uh, they're cheerleaders. So they, and they have some background about just day-to-day -day business activity, taking phone calls, you know, um, being professional in a nice commun communication with an email. It helps if you have some um, publicity background because you wanna pitch them to p different people, open up doors and opportunities. So um, yeah, at that early stage, I think that, you know, and, and you trust this person. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing. You respect and trust this person. And so you feel like I'm in good hands. That, that is number one. So, and then later on, you know, if you're looking for a big name manager, uh, what they're going to look for is, uh, you know, basically uh, your body of work, you know, what you've done and, and then some current projects and some current goals. 
you know, say you want to um, play at the Madison Square Garden next year. That's a big goal. So how do we get there? Say you want to uh, release your debut album or, you know, your fifth album for that matter, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and you don't have, you're not on a label. So you now need a support group of, you know, NR. It's almost like, you know, concept of the album, the songs we select, which producers do we get involved? What collaborations do we look for? So those are all things that if you need some, you know, um, consult with someone that you trust and respect, that's where a manager will come in. Maybe mm -hmm. this manager at that point is going to seek distribution deal for you, or they're going to do um, a higher level publicity, or mm -hmm. they're going to uh, help with touring or what have you, you know? So these are things that, uh, at later on you're, you're looking for. That's amazing. Yeah. I think this is exactly what, uh, you know, a few people chimed in. They want to receive management. We got receive management. And so it sounds like that in the beginning you have your best friend manager, right. Or, mm -hmm. you know, a momager, right. Or, yeah. uh, you know, or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And then that friend or parent or family member can then help you prepare your portfolio, so to speak, to yeah. help attract that second manager eventually. But what my question for you, what happens? What's the relationship between current manager? Maybe it's mom or maybe yeah. it's the best friend, right? And the Very manager important. you want to a, receive someday. What, Very what's the important question? Very important question, because actually, as we see in the music landscape, some mm -hmm. really great artists, uh, whether it's uh, Billie Eilish or you know, Beyonce or, um, you know, Taylor Swift, they mm -hmm. all started with their moms and or mm -hmm. dads, Michael Jackson. I mean, these guys, mm -hmm. these were all family managed artists in the beginning. Right. And uh, that's where it really starts because artists start exhibiting their art and their, you know, very earlier on. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're seven mm -hmm. years old and you're writing songs, you know, who's going to manage you? Your mom. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but great question you were asking because later on, after this person knows so much about you, but they don't really necessarily know about the outside world. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't yeah. know about attorneys and record company executives and, you know, uh, the PR media, you know, so, mm -hmm. so that's where you become a team more, more or less, because you still can't compete with what they know about the artist. Um, mm. they're, they're been there from their birth. So, you know, <laughs> but you become a team and, uh, again, it's trust has a lot to do with it. Trust and respect. These are two words that I always repeat because, um, you want people that, uh, you connect with, you know, um, totally. So, so yeah, it's, uh, uh you know, you ultimately you're always working with the family, even if they weren't managed by the family member. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you become part of the family. That's so cool. But yeah, it's yeah, it's. People I've managed, for instance, mm -hmm. the producers that I work with uh, for many many years, uh, Grammy winning uh, artist Brent Fisher is an arranger, orchestrator, composer. Mm -hmm. He's in the jazz space mostly, but you know prolific with wonderful mm -hmm. music that, uh, you know, it just, uh, it's in the R and B space in the classic space, jazz, you know, it's all over the thing. And, uh, and a second generation artist who's really managing his own, uh, label, his own publishing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked with uh, Grammy winning Rafa Sardina, who's a mixer engineer, uh, more in the Latin space, but also, um, doing a lot of, uh, other types of music, uh, versatile mixer, engineer, producer with his own studio. Uh, Ken Al Allardyce, who, um, you know, is a, he has his own label now, indie label. Um, mm -hmm. He's worked with the Goo Goo Dolls and Green Day. And uh, I just, in fact, did an interview with him because I've got this uh, new series that I'm doing um, called uh, Music that, that Lives and Moves Us. And this is, I'm focusing on the decade of 90s because I feel that the world of music really changed after that. 
uh, you know, tremendously. I mean, just every, the way it was distributed, the way it was marketed, this was even before the social networks, you know, so, but the songs, it doesn't matter, you know, music, uh, you want music that is crosses generations, you know, have has a long shelf life. So that's the ultimate goal for every artist. Yeah, definitely. To have your music outlive you is pretty Absolutely. much the dream. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what we've seen. I don't know, this is a total tangent, but it seems like the music of the 90s and before is, it's timeless in a way, but the music that comes out today, it's just rinse and repeat and you forget about it. And uh, the, the new version of the kind of the same thing comes out and it's, it's yeah. totally different. Well, I think. there's a lot of great music now. I'm, I'm actually, it's, it's incredible. The, there's great music now that I'm sure it will last a long time. People, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in 2050, 2060, they're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, but because there's so much of it now, because the technology mm -hmm. allows us to hear and the other thing with technology, what has done, which I'm not sure how good that is, is um, the sound alike music is what people are getting used to listening because Amazon companies like that, they, they want to please consumers. So they're like, well, if you like this music, you're gonna love this, this, this. Um, but they're not, there's no artist loyalty there. So as a manager, I'm a little concerned about that because I'm always about building artist loyalty, artist branding. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes and says, well, they are a sound alike, that to me mm -hmm. is like dumbing down the audience because you're just mm -hmm. saying, oh, just listen to more of that. You know? Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Whereas you could be satisfied by listening to an album beginning to end you can just turn on the Spotify artist radio and create kind of your own, you know, homogenous listening experience, but with a million different artists. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's probably going to really negatively affect how much uh, that artist can command as far as, you know, selling merchandise, getting, you know, butts and mm -hmm. seats, right. Because, you know, just yeah. the amount of time spent, listening to an album versus jumping from song to song, it's, it's, it's not even comparable. Yeah, listening, I mean, it's not just old school to say listening to albums, it's a different experience, because mm -hmm. it is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it allows you a half an hour to just relax and enter a world of an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas a song doesn't do that. You know, a song, you just move on to the next and blah, you know. Yeah. So it's a different experience. Um, and um, that's why I think vinyls are back. But, you know, that's such a small, uh, small segment of the industry, too. Yeah, so. it's almost like a cry for the uh, connection, right? That's what vinyl is representing. That's so right. I just, want, I just need to connect in some way, whether it's tangible or through that length, that half hour that you're talking about. And yeah, Ryan, the tangibility is a really uh, big one too, because, you know, it, the, with, the, with the albums, you know, you really um, have an opportunity to read. Uh, sometimes there is uh, album notes there. There are pictures from the recording session. There's just so much. Mm -hmm. uh, the lyrics, it's all in one place. So while in that half an hour, you're in front of your speakers, relaxed, with a candle or, you know, it's, it's an yeah. experience. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's so good. It just says totally changed in the nineties. I think yeah, everyone is feeling that. Um, I want to ask you a quick question about something you said earlier. Um, and it has to do with, you know, having your best friend as a manager, eventually building a team, which I thought that was a great nugget because, you know, it's, it's not about replacing, your managers are just about adding trusted people to your team. And so what I want to ask you is as a, as an artist who's tuned in today or as a, a producer, if you're watching, um, you know, Oh, and by the way, if you just tuned in, say hi, we are taking questions by the way, 
But if you are wanting to receive management, what is um, what is that body of work that you mentioned? Is that releasing a full length album? Is that the most impressive thing? I know there's a lot of uh, people, especially here on YouTube, who are saying, no, don't release albums. It's a waste of time. Release singles, right? Is that the right kind of body of work? Or is it a, a, a body of work as far as uh, playing venues, right? Actually physically touring uh, and, and moving around geographically, like here in the U.S., would that mean going from state to state? And is that kind of the body of work that is the most impressive, or is it all of the above? I would just really love to unpack that a little bit. You know, what should people be shooting for? Shooting the goal. Very good yeah. question. And uh, this is a cliche. Everybody says the same thing, but you know, building a fan base is number one. And mm. how do you do that? By getting out there and playing live. Uh, there's no substitute for playing live because you can put together the most successful album, but if you can't sell it and you're going to sell it when you play for, you know, thousand people, maybe even 200 people. And that's an art learning how to play in front of 10 people versus 10,000 people. Hmm. And you want to deliver, you know, the same product just, a, you know, either way, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, so having that, that is a, that is an art in itself. Yeah. So, um, and, and then having a mechanism, and this is where your manager or your mom or friend can help at capturing people's emails, contacts, so you can get in touch with them because, um, you know, just mentioning it while you're playing you know you learn that's another art of how to connect with an audience and just kind of say hey you know visit our website we got merch there we got you know mm -hmm. join our mailing list we do this and that you know just like basic stuff yeah so um but that just takes time and um to develop a fan base because ultimately releasing an album you know you want them to download it you want them to buy it and you got to have that audience so. Yeah, so it sounds like to me that what would be most impressive to you is having a mailing list of like a thousand fans who, you know, you can communicate with any time, yeah. uh, you can sell merch to, rather than having, you know, a, a thousand songs released, but no yeah. one listens to them, right? That's, that's really the, the track Equally record. important record. because, you know, one doesn't exist with the other. I mean, you could, mm -hmm. you know, if you have... Um, 200,000 emails and you don't have the goods, what are we going to do with that? Hmm. You know, you got to have the songs. So you got to yeah, have the okay. music, you got to have a vision. And, uh, you know, uh, the, that's what you're going to present. So that's just as important. I mean, uh, the ma the uh, fan base, it's, it's easier. I think the, the first part is having your, your sound, your uh, uh, what, how you want to communicate, what you're communicating to to the fans, that yeah. comes, of mm -hmm. course. That's huge. Yeah. So it's like equal yeah. parts, your equal unique parts. vision, right, and executing and having great songs, great recordings, a great live performance, but then equally being able to capture those emails, being able to captivate an audience, and those two ships need to rise together. That's to right. really make an impact. That's a, that's amazing. That's huge, yeah. guys, if you're tuned in. And really quick, I just want to welcome everyone who has joined us. Uh, just drop a hello in the chat. We want to make sure that we know who you are by name. Uh, this is your time uh, to just uh, ask questions. I have Clarice with me today, which is a, a special opportunity for you to ask one of, uh, you know, just one of the greatest artist managers I know of who uh, manages Grammy winning talent in los angeles so take advantage of this guys um there's there's so much to be learned and i just want to make sure that this is valuable for you and so uh, hey, ryan i wanted to remind you because you asked me a good question um when you were we were talking on the phone you said mm -hmm. how to hire a producer what's the best way to hire a producer absolutely yes so uh that's also very much like almost like searching for the good manager or you know that fits mm. you it's uh first it's somebody 
you've heard their music. You know, there's a song you heard that then you look up and see, I wonder, you know, who was involved in that, who played on it, who produced it, you know, and so that's how you get to know about the producer and then you just kind of search and find them. Um, right. We have about 70 plus producers on Studio Expresso. So if you just Google Studio Expresso pr producer profile, uh, a lot of these guys will come up. Then you look at their credits and mm -hmm. see which artists they've worked with that uh, you know is close to what you're doing um, or you admire. And so that's first. And the next thing, um, uh, the ask is very simple. It's um, so that's why you want to work with a producer. And uh, then, you know, you have to tell them when you want to do your project. If it's mm. one song, three songs or a full album, let's say by November of 2022. Or I, you know, some record companies will call us and like, I need this done by next week. You know, but that's time is very important. You, you want to mm -hmm. know. So you can clear people's schedule or, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm available next month if you can wait. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the how is um, you're presenting the repertoire. I have, let's say, um, 20 songs that I'd like you to work with me. And so that's really then gets you in pre-production stage where you have to sit down, listen to the songs or whether it's, you know, online if you're working collaboratively um, and choose, let's say, you know, I think it would be good to do four songs for you to start with. Let's just do an EP. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the songs that I feel that they're strong. Or mm -hmm. let's work on a, you know, writing collaboration. You know, I don't think this, you're ready yet. Let's just, you know, I have this other writer that I'd like you to consider, you know, mm -hmm. me. Um, so all of those conversations come up. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, you know, there is also this budgetary, uh, right. you know, consideration, uh, which is primarily uh, if you're early stage, um, it's going to be your recording costs, which means um, if you don't have a band that is ready to go in the studio, then we need some musicians to mm -hmm. hire. And we need a, perhaps an arranger, perhaps not. Maybe you're an arranger. That's just, mm -hmm. you know, we don't need that. Um, and then, um, so you figure out, you know, what, what that is. And, um, so you present that to the producer and a lot of artists these days are pretty much, I mean, everybody's independent, uh, even major artists. I, my, I've been finding the last, um, 10 years, um, they're the executive producers with, mm -hmm. with that comes control, which is wonderful. Um, but then you're also looking at an investment, which means you own your masters. Mm -hmm. um, and in case of your writer, it, it, the best of both worlds is to own your masters and your publishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, you know, that's how you make the ask. And for someone who might not know, what does it mean to be an executive producer on your own album? Yeah. And going back, by the way, as far as asks go, um, uh, specific to Brent Fisher, um, who I represent, uh, Questlove, when he wanted to work with him on Elvis Costello and the Roots album uh, a couple of years back, he sent this amazing email uh, just kind of saying why he picked him. Hmm. And I have that framed on my desk because it's just one of those. I mean, some people have ways with words and he's one of them. Yeah. So the way he made that ask, it was like, yep, I'm there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that also encourages people to, um, to get on board. I think communication uh -huh. is a really big asset to have or just to learn. It's a learning skill. So in mm -hmm. any uh, business, but I think as an artist also, um, when you communicate well, it opens doors. Absolutely, yeah. But I wanna we go back, so your question about okay. executive producing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so executive producing is pretty much you're, you're handling the budget. You decide, you know, I'm gonna allocate this much to the recording, 
uh, and uh, you know, and this is who I want to hire. Uh, you're exercising full control. Whereas if you are assigned to a label, your NR guy is going to come in and uh, with all good intentions and probably, uh, you know, hopefully you like this NR person, you're on the same wavelength. Um, they're going to suggest sometimes a producer. They're going to suggest, uh, have a say about which songs, mm -hmm. what direction, you know, so um, because they're paying for it. So they have yeah. vested interest to make it a success. It's not a negative, you know, it's, it's um, in some cases they um, don't know what they're doing, but, you know, because the artist's vision is so different and right, right. doesn't, that that's sometimes that goes uh, it doesn't go right but but if you have the right nr person on your on your team it's the best thing because they're more of a collaborative yeah 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 controls the budget yeah and then they control the budget they give you an advance i mean some of my artists in the past, for instance, with publishing, um, you know, uh, situations, uh, oftentimes producers who work with major artists, the record companies want to give them a publishing deal because they believe in their writing abilities. And then also because they're writing for major artists right away to them, that's like success. So they give, they will offer you an advance, um, anywhere from 10 to $50,000, uh, to um, to work your your uh, body of you know your catalog basically. That's awesome. We have a couple of really great questions that popped in. I think I'm going to go a little out of order because this one's a little more relevant to what we're talking about right now. But uh, Jody's asking. Clarice talked about the importance of performing live. What do you think about live streaming? Is that an alternative to performing live in person? Or is it more of a supplement? That's a great question. It's a good think? question. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's actually uh, it's been um, absolutely so important this last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, without that, you know, you, you see artists streaming from their home, from their little bedrooms, and some of the stuff is really good. Um, they're playing, you know. Um, in fact, even our big band uh, just. Uh, did about four or five concerts um, in front of their rehearsal space mm -hmm. uh, for an audience of like 20, 30 people that that was live streamed. So right. streaming is uh, something that's going to stay with us. I mean, it's, it's a great way to reach um, the world. Basically, if you mm -hmm. can um, certainly um, put the right tags and, you know, make it available to a larger audience. It's a great way to reach a larger audience. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I yeah, just want to add one thing. one thing. I think we're getting that echo back. Oh man, we got that echo again. I'll try to talk softly. But to just add one more thing, I think the, uh, the important thing about live streaming is that you're able to replicate that, that uh, attraction that you would normally have in a live situation. Because if you're live streaming and it's dull and you're not really making that connection, then I think it can be a little bit of a waste of time. If you're able to replicate the live experience over the camera, right, and you're able to have your personality be seen and it's, it's just engaging and it's sticky with whoever is watching, then live streaming, um, I think, can almost replace that live experience almost though because there is something about playing loud and there is something about the energy of the room so i don't think it can absolutely replace it but th it does have the ability to still make that human to human connection that we're all after so hopefully that helps uh you think through that jody and then we have a couple of other really great questions that i just want to hit really quick we have two that are almost the same so Kimberly is asking, how do you get sync licensing opportunities? And Dustin's asking, from a manager's perspective, how would you go about getting a song on a TV show? So pretty similar question there. Um, what, what would you say to these two viewers? Well, these are the holy grails, right? Everybody wants to get their song on a TV 
or oh, yeah. um you know uh yeah so tv show you know basically again it's uh just not being afraid to pitch it you know mm -hmm. and and find win-win opportunities. The more you research, the more you find out about why, for instance, your song is perfect for this one episode, um, you know, uh, or not one episode, but you're familiar with the TV show, let's say. You've watched 20 episodes already, and you kind of know what the subject matter is. Because I did an interview with Mark, Mark Isham uh, a couple of months ago, who writes for film mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, but he started writing for a TV show this last uh, last year, especially with the COVID and everything. And he was telling me, um, that's, by the way, on the Studio Expresso website. Just if you go online um, to the, the homepage, it's posted there. But he talks about the considerations that, as a composer, you have to take into consideration, you know, to, to write for TV. It's very different. TV is different from film. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the pitching side is it that makes it easier once you have something that fits um, then you really can present it that way uh, find out who the producers are um, in in film world usually directors get involved with who they want as a composer there's music supervisors of course that you need to have uh, access to and you know one thing i um always tell people is and this is what managers are also uh good at usually is just having relationships because you can have 50 supervisors that you can send an email to about something but if you don't know them personally if they don't know you they get a lot of emails yeah so make an effort to get to know someone uh, because that will get your foot in the door a lot easier. Uh, you know, my uh, I have this advice that uh, I live by, uh, by Warren Buffett, of all people, right? And uh, he says three things. He says, surround yourself with good people. That's a must. He says, go to bed smarter every night. You know, learn something new every day. And um, finally... Um, you know, he's saying that learn to be a good communicator, which is what we've been talking about. Communication is very important. You know, even if you're just sending an email to your manager or sending an email to uh, putting together um, a little newsletter for your fans, mm -hmm. how you connect to them to be clear and to be um, fun and, you know, um, motivating it, it's an art so i think learning that is, is is a good thing yeah all the things that make people want to be near you right yeah <laughs> to simplify yeah. it yeah it's and that it's simple probably, it's probably the same things that you would do to just you know attract any friend right just trying to become that exactly. friend yeah have supervisors for friends <laughs> that's the answer yeah <laughs> That is, that is a recurring theme here. Uh, yeah. Almost everyone who's come on has basically said people just want to work with people that they like. They want to work with their friends, right? Totally. And, so, and you know, uh, actually, what I would also advise is um, get to know your peer, like uh, your uh, generation's supervisors, because they're coming up. They may mm -hmm. not be doing big uh, TV shows or. Uh, they're not directors of big films yet, but if you get to know them now as friends, that's going to be a lifelong uh, relationship that you will cherish. So, yeah. Yeah. So don't uh, look for the big names because they're already, mm -hmm. they've got too many people uh, around them. But start mm -hmm. with people in your school, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in... Uh, if you're working for a label or, you know, if you're a radio station. And that's another good thing is uh, for artists, I think, to uh, like uh, the years that I manage recording studios, oftentimes the receptionist, the bookkeeper, what have you, they were all artists. Uh, but that put them in proximity with uh, what was also going on and, and creating those relationships with their clients sometimes. 
Um, that's how I started, in fact, um, managing artists was, um, you know, uh, one, of, one of my first uh, clients was uh, Rafa Sardina. Both of us worked at Ocean Way. He was an assistant engineer. I was a studio manager. When I left the facility, he was the first person I called because I really admired how he worked, his personality. So that's how it starts. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I want, want to, want to get to more, more questions. questions. Hopefully, that, hopefully that, 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 it seems just becoming kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, I think, okay, it's gone now. So yes, if you're just tuning in, uh, we are taking your questions. Don't be shy. Also, I just saw a bunch of people just join. So just drop a hello and uh, say hi so we can see your name come up. We just we definitely want to know who's with us so that we can customize this. Uh, Kevin just popped in. Aloha from Hawaii. Uh, wow, thanks. I'd like to be there now. That sounds really <laughs> nice. <laughs> Johanna says, thank you for this live stream. Ian says, of course, I'm in California. Ryan, you're in Nashville, so mm -hmm. Hawaii sounds good. <laughs> definitely, definitely better than the 90 degree humid weather. Well, it's probably 90 degrees and humid in Hawaii too, but you guys have the ocean, which we do not. We're a landlocked right. state. <laughs> but yes, definitely drop in your questions. Um, if you're just tuning in, Clarice is a manager out in Los Angeles. She's been doing this for many, many years, manages Grammy winning talent, uh, producers, composers, songwriters. Uh, she, she does it all. And if you need to learn about management, if you want to become a management manager, if you are looking to find a manager or you just need to know anything about management, drop your question in. This is your time. We are live right now. So you can ask your question and become a part of this stream. So, uh, oh, and can, can I reply? It's always nice here. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> it's tough. That's cute. And then Dustin says, uh, thanks so much for answering the question. Oh, you're welcome. Here's an interesting question about uh, being an overseas artist. He's asking, what marketing strategies can an independent artist from the Caribbean use to gain fans in the U.S. and the wider world? I guess he's asking, how do you cross territories? How does right. an artist That's a good do question. That? Caribbean, another fun place. Um, <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, Doja, actually, my question would be also, I would love to have my artist involved in the Caribbean. I mean, it's a grass is greener mm -hmm. always on the other side. It's a big world. I always mm -hmm. tell my artists, it's still a big world, even with the internet and our ability to, um, you know, you still have to, as an artist, uh, so he's absolutely right that you have to, uh, you know, have fan base in different parts of the world. Um, but one thing that's kind of cool with the internet is that um, if you have music streaming um, and, you know, online, you can look at your stats and see what parts of the world people are paying attention to you and then focus there because that's always fun. Like you would always surprise yourself. I mean, some people in China may be listening to you or, you know, in Japan or in Netherlands, you know, so... You know, you want to then once you know some, you know, you've got their attention, um, then, you know, you focus more in that market. Mm -hmm. um, but how to break into a U.S. market uh, is uh, is just by just doing uh, what you do, making your music available to a larger fan base, really. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever have an opportunity to the best, of course, is if you could come to U.S. at some point mm -hmm. and, um, you know, do shows here. Yeah. Uh, you know, if it's your, if you're just, I, I'm not, forgive me, I'm not familiar with what you've already done. But if you, let's say you already have two albums and uh, then you work with your distribution uh, people to get you in those places, do some publicity in those cities. Mm -hmm. uh, say if you want people to know you in Los Angeles, find a magazine in LA that, and do an interview with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, get on a radio show. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, NPR here does great shows. 
sometimes you know you hear about artists in Africa, you hear from artists in France, and so just because you're in a different country doesn't mean like we're interested to hear to hear you. That's great advice, That's great especially advice. with the local content tip. NPR is such a great tip. Uh, I love it. Every city has a local radio station. Almost every college too has a college radio station. Mm -hmm. So that that could definitely help. I want to ask actually a follow up question to this because it's such a great question. Um, you said that the grass is greener uh, on the other side. So there's probably American artists who are looking to break into the Caribbean, right? So would yeah. a good would a good uh, way to go about this is just to find someone to collaborate with, right? Intermingle yeah. the fan bases. Um, Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. like this gentleman, um, you know, if you can uh, uh, forward your email, stay in touch and uh, let us know, like, uh, what are some key uh, college stations in your city? Mm -hmm. And maybe we can exchange. We can give you some college, you know, uh, radio stations here, um, some magazines, you know, that exchange mm -hmm. in itself uh, could help people you know that's and, and uh, that's why social media is so great because you really can talk to people from different parts of the world make friends and uh and exchange information that's great that's so, huge yeah. i kind of had a mini realization while you were saying that it's it's like if you have the goods and you have something going on yeah. you can you can trade that attention for someone else who has the goods that has something of their own going on, right? And yeah. so if you are doing your due diligence, building locally, building your fan base, building that mailing list, playing shows in your community or in your local area, and you've actually built something real, you can use that as a, a bargaining chip. Totally. Right? Other yeah. artists who are, you know, like you said, grass is greener. I, you know, I'd love to, you know, play a show in the Caribbean. Well, you can make that help make that happen for someone. Yeah. Right. And do a trade or something like that. I think that's that's huge. That's something I've never really I've never thought of it in that way before. Um, yeah. I think that's excellent. And uh, just thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think we basically just answered this question. Um, so go into the if you just joined, go into the replay <laughs> and uh, and make oh, sure that you like rewind that. about 10 minutes. And Absolutely. Like, Anybody can become an icon, really. It's just a matter of, um, you know, doing what you do best and, uh, and connecting to your fans mm -hmm. um, and keeping at it because um, icons, uh, you know, uh, it's just, you know, generational. They, mm -hmm. they cross generational barriers, which is, to me, it's incredible. Uh, you know, you, um, you know, somebody like a Jimi Hendrix uh, is just as respected and loved today as he was then. Uh, Prince and, you know, um, uh, Ella Fitzgerald. And, you know, so, I mean, these people are always, these are the icons that we love and respect today. And they are long gone. Right. But their music lives. Yes. Yeah, it goes back to having that, that amazing catalog. And we, and we need more icons. We need icons from our generation for the next, uh, you know, 100 years. Uh, you know, somebody. <laughs> and and they are there. They are there. They're, you know, and uh, a lot of our producers are developing them, which is pretty exciting. Hmm. That's actually a great uh, segue to Kim's question. She's asking, are you looking for new clients and artists? How can people submit their music and their tracks to you? This hmm. is a, this should be an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm always looking for people that we can connect and I can be of service because uh, it goes both ways. Um, but you know, with management, I always say if somebody's trying to reach out, is the first step is keep in touch. In other words, put me on your mailing list. Let me learn what you're doing. Because uh, after maybe a few months, even after a year of really getting to know each other is when we can be helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, or I can maybe recommend somebody else, you know, who is uh, more fitted to your needs. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So it's a long-term relationship. It's never, in fact, to be honest with you, here's the other thing. I'm probably not doing the right thing. And I'm sure some of your managers, uh, high-level managers you interview, they'll tell you there is a management contract. You know, you sign an artist as a manager. I've mm-hmm. never signed a contract with any of the artists that I've worked with. Interesting. Because I feel that, um, you know, as long as it's a fruitful relationship, it will continue. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is a contract going to do? Right. Now, I don't, I always, as a manager, I recommend for artists to have good contracts with record company, with producer, with whatever mm-hmm. else, publishing, licensing. These are contracts that, um, again, it has to be so simple. You need to understand all the terms. In one, we start with a memo deal usually, um, because I work with a lot of attorneys. And so with a memo deal, it's going to be not more than 10 points Mm -hmm. that you all agree on. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest is sort of legalese, you know, it's just, but the main points you really need to be clear on what your responsibility is, what the timelines of things are, what's the monetary exchange, who's paying who, and you know, the basic stuff. Yeah. So um, that's where, you know, but as far as my own artists, I never sign agreements. Because I think that, you know, uh, it's, it's a very long term relationship. It's kind of like saying, uh, getting married and then you sign a contract Mm -hmm. you know you don't really sign a contract you just uh know that you can trust this person and you know when when it's the relationship changes badly you move on with or without a contract right yeah even if a contract's in place it'll come up they'll hightail the other direction and exactly same same result no matter what yeah. Here's another great question. Oh, and I just want to say that uh, we'll, we'll be here taking your questions only for about uh, five more minutes. I, I really want to try to you know keep these to an hour just to respect our guest's time. And uh, but so if you do have a question, if you have a burning question that you just need to get out while we have Clarice here, uh, artist manager, please ask it now. I'm kind of uh, it's kind of the last call. So drop in your questions in the chat. Uh, we have a few more that we're going to pull up, but I want to make sure that if you just have something and haven't typed it out yet, now's the time. Uh, we have about five minutes left. But um, here's a great question. Um, this is, I think, a, a new angle on something that we've kind of touched on. Jay is asking, how do you go about getting a manager as a hip hop artist? Right, what would you do? Uh, as far as submissions, would you direct message? Of course, it still goes back to building that relationship, but is there anything that you would add um, specifically for a hip hop artist? Uh, No, because the main thing is uh, if you wanna, you know, I I personally like working with artists who are not genre specific, uh, Mm -hmm. musical genre specific, because to me, music is so, uh, broad and and cross you know um genres that uh but it would help uh if your manager is a big hip-hop fan Mm -hmm. uh or knowledgeable about uh because you know think about it the record company executives in urban uh hip-hop are going to be different people than pop or rock or you know classical So you definitely want someone in that space uh, who has worked with hip hop artists. uh, And uh, that, that would be my only, the rest is the same, as you said, Ryan, the the rest is the same. You want Mm -hmm. someone that you trust and respect someone who um, is a big fan of your work. Yes. And it's not just about direct messaging, not just about cold emailing. It's about actually having a friendship with this person. Yeah. Uh, and that yeah. builds over the long term. Yeah. The best, I mean, you know, a lot of the, if you go a little bit too, uh, you know, uh, if you're, let's say, Usher or, um, you know, you can call a big name manager and, and invite them to for a cup of coffee for mm-hmm. lunch. So think of it that way. So if you're not Usher yet, you're going to have to uh, 
find someone that will go to coffee with you, will have lunch with you, because um, that's where you get to know each other in person. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And they have to be a fan of your music. And Absolutely. most artist that's managers, the they love music, right? I mean, that's why they do it. And so if you are an artist that they believe in, that they love, they love your 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 songs, your style, the, the way that you are, right? Then uh, that friendship can be built. And so it, it, I think it really starts, and we've said this many times, but it starts really on working on yourself, having your catalog fleshed out, right? Hitting kind of those landmarks as far as actually performing live, building your mailing list, right? As we said earlier, these ships need to rise together. Don't just focus on the studio without, uh, you know, building your fan base and don't just focus on the fan base without building your catalog. And so um, I just wanted to add that because this is some stuff we said earlier in the stream uh, that I think will really help. Okay. Uh, we have a few more questions coming in last minute. We will grab these really quick. Uh, here's an interesting one. Um, I'm guessing Corey is asking as a self managed, managed artist, I'm, I'm just That's making cool. that assumption. Um, but how to submit to festivals or opening for larger bands? What would you say to that? That's a great question because that's a great strategy. Um, mm. You know, we've heard the stories of, you know, unknown artists suddenly, uh, you know, make, you know, again, but also you have to be prepared because what are you going to do if you're in front of 10,000 people suddenly? Nobody's heard of your name. You know, how are you going to get, make an impression? That's mm -hmm. another, um, you have to be prepared. Um, so how is, again, I hate to be uh, a broken record, but you got to make friends with someone. Make, a, make friends with the roadie. You know, sometimes roadies are really like um, uh, friendly people, you know, that uh, it could be, um, it could be a company that uh, rents or uh, procures equipment for the major artists. Um, they're always, you know, uh, supporting them. My husband, uh, we used to uh, represent um, Hammond instruments and we uh, serviced Hammond artists whenever they were on the road with someone, if something, you know, they, they needed a keyboard, we, we, we would supply it. So um, those guys are a good way to also connect to these major bands mm -hmm. um, and because they learn, you know, they're talking, they're delivering an equipment. They're like, yeah, you know, we're still talking about who's going to open for us, you know? So they're like, Hey, you know, check this guy's out. Yeah. I know that. So that's how it happens. It's that network, that support it's the network. It's not an email. You send somebody like cold call, you know, because it's just, it happens so quickly. You know, and, and these guys, especially with major artists, they have so much resources coming at them. You know, the manager has somebody in mind. The a &R has somebody in mind. Their attorney may have a re recommendation for a opening band, you know? Yeah, that's great. Okay, I want to take one more question. We're almost out of time. Actually, we're, we're not counting the technical difficulty, so we're super over time. But I just want to take uh, one more question. I feel like this one is a really great angle that we haven't really touched on yet. Um, but Ian's question is, as a producer, helping young, talented songwriters arrange their first few songs, how would you recommend they start promoting their work to artists? Right? He's asking, as a producer, right, which is many of your clientele, how to find artists what's the what's the secret there uh, well uh that one also comes from uh well, i was gonna say um uh, sign up with studio espresso number one mm. <laughs> so a little self-plug yeah. but the other thing is uh literally uh seeking talent i mean that is your mm. job as a producer uh that comes to you from other musicians Mm -hmm. uh, from your manager, from you going out to gigs, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, you just maybe even uh, a friend sending you a link 
to an artist on YouTube or uh, so many different ways. I mean, there is just a uh, wealth of uh, talent out there. And so that's how you find. And, you know, uh, as far as promoting yourself, uh, it really helps to work with a PR agent. Um, if you're not at that level, do some self-promoting uh, through your social networks. Mm -hmm. You know, post your work. Let let artists hear what you've been doing, mm -hmm. uh, because that that will get them interested. That's so. great. It seems it's very similar to the management conversation we had, where yeah. there's like stage one, right? You either have best friend manager, mom manager, or you're self managing, right? You have to build that track record, your catalog. It's all the same things, and then eventually you can reach out and add professional management to your team or PR guy or whatever it might be. And so it, it seems to me a very similar where you operate in stages yeah. um, where you start it, doing what you can. It, yes. It's very organic though. I think that, you know, like you said, you were so right about uh, self promoting yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's just, it, it grows organically. It grows as your work, as your catalog uh, grows. Um, you know, uh, your, your network grows. So, you know, it's an organic process. I don't think you need to uh, push a button and make it happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's bu building that web of support, those people who are going to be your eyes and ears on the ground. So, all right. Hey, I think that's it. So we had a lot of uh, thank yous. I just didn't pull them up on the screen, but Ian says, uh, thank you. Galen says, thank you so much. Kimberly My says, honor. thank you both. Great masterclass. Jay says, thank you. We covered so many great questions. Thanks again. Um, uh, it's just been awesome. So thank you, Clarice, for joining us today. I know everyone. Go for got it. Yeah, you guys just go make music and yeah. uh, get in touch with people connect. That's, really. that's the best way. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, you got it. Build friendships. One more time. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't yet stuck, uh, check out studio espresso. Um, you can see more about Clarice. You can see the artists that she manages. You can just learn more. There's a mailing list that she has too. Um, if you're not building your mailing list, build your mailing list. Uh, and, uh, with that, um, I know a bunch of questions came in. Uh, some of that stuff we covered earlier, in the stream. So just go ahead and uh, rewind a little bit. Um, I know it might be hard to find the exact moment, uh, but there's a lot of great stuff that we covered earlier in, in our hour together. Um, yeah, we got some more thank yous coming in. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Clarice. And with that, uh, I'll see you guys in a future stream. Thanks so much for joining us uh, and uh, best of luck with your music. Have a great rest of your day.